everyone, and welcome back to one of our interactive uh, discussion sections about using, in this case, about using neural nets in R. Um, and so uh, it's going to start up like the way we've done most of ours, where we first set the working directory. We're then going to pull in that neural net library. And again, if you don't have it, you can go up to tools, install packages, type in neural net. It's right there. Um, there are a lot of different packages for neural nets in R. I'm just using kind of the most basic one just to kind of present with you with an idea of how you might go about doing this. We're going to do that normalize function because we're going to use the bank data again. So we're going to pull in that bank data. We're going to split the training and testing. Uh, there's some code here that's just some of the exploratory code. I always like to keep that around just in case I want to uh, check what the different uh, variables are and make sure that I'm loading the right data and all that. Um, and then there is this command to just pull out the numerical attributes, right? Because if you remember, right, that's going to get the age, balance, and duration attributes in particular. I think there, there may be some other numerical attributes in this data, but that's, those are the ones that seem to be working the best as a predictor. And then uh, we're going to normalize those attributes so that they're uh, easier for the neural net to learn from. Now, you don't, unlike a KNN or something like that, you don't necessarily have to normalize the input values for a neural net because it will adapt the weights. But if they're in the same range, it makes it easier to tell what the neural net is actually doing, right? Um, and it's really hard to tell what neural nets are doing. So anything you could do to simplify that process, the better, right? And then the next thing we're going to do is uh, we're going to run the actual neural net command. And this looks almost exactly like it would for k nearest neighbors or, or you know, uh, linear regression or a lot of different other things where we're taking our output variable and we're regressing it on the age plus balance plus duration, right? Um, except in this particular case, you'll notice that we're doing this y equals equals yes kind of thing. And that's because if you give, uh, what that does is that trans translates all the y's in the output into ones right, if they're true, so if they're equal to yes, so if the y value is yes, it will be a one because the saying is y equal to yes, if it is, it's a one. If it's something else, it'll put it to zero. And if the neural net package sees nothing but ones and zeros, it's assuming that you want a Boolean output and so it'll only have one output node. Whereas if you put it equal to just y, which I'll show you in a second, it would actually create a multi-class output and that's just harder to work with. So. Um, let's go through and I'll show you what this looks like before we go up and down. So we can just plot it, right? And as you can see from the plot, right, it takes the age, the balance, and the duration, it multiplies them times a number, adds in the bias function, and then um, I, you know, determines the output of the, of the neural net, right? Um, now, yeah, just to show you, let's back up and I'm just going to take out that y equals equals yes and rerun it right and then plot it and as you can see it actually won't plot over there because it doesn't really fit um, and so it actually creates a separate one for out and no and yes you can work with this right you can just interpret what's the output value on no and what's the output value on yes and if it's greater on yes than no then you assume it's a yes and there are ways to work with this but it's just you know it's just easier to work with it in this format if all you really care about is a yes or a no right okay so let me go back and retrain it the way it was just so I can continue to work with it. Okay, so there we go. So now we're going to do that same thing we did before where we're just going to check to see if the value is greater than 0.5, we'll give it a, we'll assume that it's predicting that it's a yes. And if it's less than that, we'll assume it's a zero. Now, again, you know, I don't think I mentioned this earlier in the class, but this is something that's called the, the threshold, right? And so you can play around with that value. Um, in fact, there are, you know, techniques where you could try to um, look at what the precision and recall and the, sorry, the true positive rate and the true negative rate would be for all sorts of different values of that threshold and then plot them um, and then identify what classifier in what threshold value you want to get the right classification levels you want. Uh, that's called a receiver operator characteristic curve. And that goes a little beyond the scope of this class, but that's something uh, you could do uh, with this um, with this type of an output. But for this case, we're just going to translate to a straight prediction. If it's greater than 0.5, it's a yes. Otherwise, it's a no, right? Um, and again, we did this right, numerical, All right? Yeah. Yep, so it's all there. 
predicting. So the predict.nn will be on the testing data, train.predict.nn will be on the training data just so we can see what it does. And when we look at the answers, and that gets pretty decent answers, right? Um, the off diagonals are probably smaller than what we've seen in some of the other examples before. So this is a, a pretty good example. Now this essentially, this neural net, um, if you look back at the original code, like I said, like I was mentioning briefly, one thing I didn't talk about is that this last value, which the hidden equal is zero. So what that says is don't have a hidden layer, essentially. So essentially, this neural net is nothing more than a perceptron because it's just taking a linear combination of the inputs and then outputting the result, right? However, we could increase this by potentially adding additional hidden layers because right now, it only do a linear combination, but a hidden layer would allow it to do nonlinear combinations as well, like we talked about in the intro. So, um, but before we do that, let's look at what the full the testing. So here it is on the training data, right? Um, and here it is on the testing data. It's probably not doing as well, right? Like it's getting it's getting a lot of those yeses wrong, right? So in other words, it's predicting. Um, a zero and the answer is in fact a yes, right? Um, so that that means it's getting those wrong, but it's still pretty good and it's getting the nose right really, really well, right? It's true negative rate is, is pretty good, okay? So um, let's train another neural net, but this time I'm gonna change hidden equal to two, right? Now this one's gonna take a little bit of time to run as you might expect because it actually now has these two hidden layers that it also has to learn the weights of. So it has to do all that back propagation as uh, through those different layers that we talked about in the theory class, in the theory discussion, as opposed to just learning the one layer. It's funny enough, like last year when I taught this class, I had an older MacBook Pro and this would have taken too long, but on my newest one, it actually doesn't take too long. So I got the answer pretty quickly from this. Um, I don't want to run it again. I have the answer. So I just want to go back up. And um, by the way, I did something here that I sometimes do when I want to kind of just play around with parameters. I just keep mapping the resultant neural net back to NN. So that way I can just keep reusing this code that's right above it, right? So now I can, after I do that, go back up and rerun. Oh, not the train the neural net. Got to get just right. I want to get just the plot in it, right? So I first of all, I can plot it, right? And now I can look what the results are on the one with two layers. And um, as you can see, um, it's kind of similar, actually, if anything, to what we got with one layer. So that one had a smaller, um, a smaller false positive rate. Uh, and I think it also had a smaller false negative rate. Let's see. Is that on the, te that's actually the testing data, right? Yeah, it is. This one barely, this, so the two layer barely has a smaller uh, false negative rate. So it, it's got a little bit different there. But I haven't shown you what it actually looks like. Um, hopefully I can find it. It should be there. There it is. So there is the actual two layer um, neural net. So as you can see, this is a much more complex neural net, right? So it um, one of the things that's nice about the... Um, the, the package that we're using is actually tries to determine the architecture of that middle layer, right? So it actually figures out how many nodes there should be and things like that. But, um, you know, as you can see it, the inputs come in here and then they're weighted to some way here. And then there's biases that affect those. And then there's another layer that comes out here and there's biases that affect those as well, right? Um, so it actually results in um, these, this, this more complex function. So you, you know, age is going to have a direct effect, but it's also going to have an effect of age times the combination of the balance duration, right, which is also going to go in and then balance has a direct effect, right, but it also has these combination effects um, through these different paths, right. Um, and it's not that one of these nodes is the age direct effect, I should be careful about saying that, right, both of these are how age directly contributes, but then they get jointly multiplied with the other ones in this space as well, right? So that's that's the um, um, the overall result. Actually, you can see it overall the error of this one is slightly smaller than the error of the one step neural net, but it the steps is kind of how long it took to train it, and it took a, a lot longer to train it, right? So almost ten times as long. So there you go. 
that's neural nets. Uh, feel free to play around with them, take a look at them, uh, see if you can get them to do something useful for your particular data set.